Hi everyone, I have with me Karen Nola and Karen is the founder and director of the rawfoodcoach.com. She is also the author of Raw Food Made Simple and Eat Right for Your Personality Type, which was published by Hay House in 2012. She's the creator and former editor of the Get Fresh magazine and the founder and uh, former director of the International Association of Raw Food Chefs, Teachers and Coaches. And she is the original raw food coach and has trained almost 2,000 men and women worldwide to be raw food coaches and teachers. She's also, as I said, one of the busiest people that uh, I've come across. Um, Karen is uh, one of the only people that's ever replied to me at two o'clock in the morning when I sent someone an email. Uh, Karen, where I'd love to start is um, I know that you've been really prolific in teaching people about eating raw food and teaching and training other people and you've founded the magazines and you've written all of those books what would you say has been the cornerstone of your success passion passion for my topic um when i got into raw food i was very young i was 20 years old and at 25 that was when i first went into the field professionally and uh it was pure passion you know i was prepared to do the work for no money and just kind of try and make ends meet month to month and I really believed in what I was doing and so you know I really feel no one should start a business without passion and furthermore I'd say white hot burning desire as uh, you know has been cited in personal development books you know you've got to have that passion that's going to take you forward in your career for the rest of your life potentially. Mm, okay thank you for that. I've looked a bit about your mindset as well. I mean, passion obviously is uh, is fantastic, and obviously that can push people forward. But um, what would you say has been other than that? What would you say has really helped you? Is it sort of having a clear vision? Is it strong habits and rhythms? What what has really helped you to ground that passion? Well, it's a combination of things. I mean, first of all, I'm naturally an organised thinker, and I think you know people have to be able to take all the knowledge that they have and distill it into something that they can share with others in a way that they can easily understand. Otherwise, you know, it floats around and it's like, well, I could do this, I could do that. And, you know, our job as the coach or the teacher or whatever we are is to make it palatable, pardon the pun, for other people. <laughs> so they can, they can get it, they can apply it, and they can actually get the transformation that they want. Um, so having an organized mind is definitely something that has benefited me tremendously especially when it comes to training others of course because that's another layer you've got to train the trainer yeah. um clarity is also super important you know you have to know where you are where you want to be and have a game plan for that and um you know the more clear you can be about what you want and why you want it and what you're looking to create overall the more successful you're going to be because you're actually launching yourself in a particular direction yeah um, and i think where a lot of people shoot themselves in the foot is they just never get clear enough you know they they know enough to know i want to be a health coach or i want to be a raw food coach or i want to be a raw food teacher or whatever it may be but that's where it begins and that's where it ends and of course that's not not enough to go on a journey with you need to be clear as to well how are you going to be different how are you going to stand out how are you going to have something else to say that other people aren't saying or say it a different way um so for me, clarity about all those things has been crucial. Um, the other thing is, and I share this a lot with my own clients and students, is a mindset that I will be successful no matter what. Um, a lot of people go into business thinking I may or may not be successful. And what I like to flag up about that mindset is that you've automatically given yourself room to not be successful by even entertaining the possibility. Mm. And so, it, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that your first plan is going to lead to success or that everything you do is going to be successful because that's rarely the case. Um, but to basically have that commitment to yourself, to your business, to the people that you're here to help, I will be successful no matter what. It means that when challenges come, as they inevitably do, you know, you'll have a plan B. You'll find one quickly if necessary. You'll do what needs to be done to stay in business and stay helping people. So that would be my top three. That's fantastic. And we'll just pick up on this as well, because I, I think that um, one of the things that can happen, especially when people are, are new in, in business and they're moving forward, 
and then they hit that bump, um, it's easy to become discouraged. And without that clear vision and that clarity, it, it can easily it sort of become very easy to, to just go, well, do you know what, I, I should go and find something else to do because this isn't working. And it really does take something to, to push through. Um, if you had one piece of advice that you could pass on to other wellness professionals, specifically uh, nutritionists and food coaches, dietitians, what would that be? I would say hand in hand with the passion piece is to find the bit what makes you different. And when I start working with people, a lot of them freak out at this because they think, well, I'm not different. You know, I, I've done this training with this person and then I know this stuff and surely everyone knows this. And there's always going to be at least one point of differentiation, if not multiple. Sometimes it just comes down to personality. Um, you know, if you think about Jamie Oliver, how many Jamie Olivers are out there? It's not just about the knowledge. There's probably plenty of chefs that have the same knowledge that Jamie Oliver has and potentially even more. Um, but it's his character, right? It's his personality. So for some people, they make a name for themselves based purely on their personality. For other people, it's going to be a very specific specialism, something that they have discovered in their own experiences and experiments where they have knowledge that no one else is talking about. And that's what it was for me. Um, you know, in my own personal raw food journey, I discovered a lot of things through being brave enough to go there um, that other people weren't talking about in my industry. And because I was experiencing it and I was sharing my experiences with other people, they were saying, oh, I have that too. And they were coming to me as students to learn because no one else was talking about it. Um, so there's personality, there's your specific niche, your specialism. And also there can be like the whole combination of things put together because all of us are a combination of things. And of course, everyone has a unique combination. It might even be your branding. You know, you might be branding yourself in a particular way to reach a particular segment of the market and doing it in a particularly outstanding way so that your branding looks top notch and everything about you suggests professionalism. You know what you're talking about. You are a perfect fit for that particular clientele. So there's loads of ways that you can make yourself different and stand out. But where so many people go wrong is they fall into that trap, which happened in life coaching of saying, I'm a life coach. Well, I'm a health coach. And it's like, yes. And how many health coaches are on the planet? How are you different? And that's what people really need to figure out. Yeah, wonderful. I love that. And just thinking about it as you're talking about it, I mean, we, we see obviously in this industry, there's yourself and there's... Um, as you mentioned, um, Jason Vale, um, there's Jamie Oliver, there's uh, Joe Wicks, uh, there's lots of different types of personalities, even within the personality kind of um, angle of it. But there's also the, these other um, companies and brands that we're, we're seeing as well, like DNA Fit, who are part of this um, promotion that we've got here as well, and also um, Cambridge Nutritional Science. So they bring in other pieces as well, because I'm also thinking that, and people who can differentiate themselves by personality that's great but there are a lot of people who are in the industry and are there and are more service-based so yeah. their challenge potentially is that um you know whereas um yourself and maybe joe wicks could lead by personality they don't maybe have that um desire to lead by personality so it's differentiating themselves by um by a product or a way of delivering could be equally powerful for them any um final thoughts on on that uh, on that topic karen well i think that's where the branding comes in because um you know we live in an age where the aesthetics it seems are more important than ever yeah and there's a lot of companies now that you know in in the health industry as well who still look quite old-fashioned and one of the biggest favors that people can do is be you know current because People are being educated subconsciously through advertising on a daily basis, as we know, and the health industry needs to move with that as well. And, you know, so I would just say to people, start paying attention to what advertising is speaking to you in other areas of your life, because there's clues everywhere. And, uh, you know, just quickly going back to the personality thing, I would also say no one should try and change who they are, because A, it will feel really clumsy and difficult um b is you've been perfectly designed to do the job that you're here to do uh, and c is it's a lot easier to just relax into yourself because 
birds of a feather flock together and you'll attract yeah. the right people for you. So, you know, I'm not the zaniest, craziest person out there, you know, and I can alternate between having a laugh and then going deep and meaningful. That's just my unique combination. Um, but I'm never going to be Jason Vale like running around a stage and waving my arms in the air. And I think sometimes people see that and think, well, I'm never going to be that. So I should just not even try. And, uh, you know, obviously I'm here to say that everyone has their unique place, their unique role. And your job is to really discover what that is, both internally and externally. Thanks for that, Karen. And obviously some people know you already, uh, but for those who are hearing you for the first time, what would be the best way for those people to find out more about you? Where, where should they go? Karenola.com, actually, yes. Um, I do many things these days. My work in raw food has taken me into the personal development field as well. Um, I'm very passionate about the link between health and human potential. That's why raw food was the thing that spoke to me. Because at the end of the day, the more physical energy we have, the more emotional, mental and spiritual energy we have. So um, people might find a few interesting things on that website that will take them in another direction with their work potentially. Brilliant. Thank you for your time, Karen. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Neil. Cheers. Cheers.